So before we jump into editing more on how these things look, if you go into join and you actually do this, you might actually see this error, none type has object for referral. Um, so if I scroll down and I see that there's this print referral objects at all, and if I click on it, it even shows me where that error is. So it says print this. So basically it's saying that this object doesn't have referral. Um, well, to solve that problem, we can just comment this out because um, it might not have any referral objects. So that's where we can just comment those two things out and just leave them out because we actually no longer need um, to see all of the joins of the main share. We don't need to see that anymore uh, because we have it handled on the actual join page, which is this one. Uh, so go ahead and save that and you can refresh in here and hit continue. And there we go. So now we see that it's working fine and we can just run it one more time just in case. There we go. Um, so that just eliminated that error, that's all. But what we see is nothing's really changing. So this top page looks exactly, I mean, it looks like the same page and we don't want that. We want it to look a little bit more like this, right? Where it actually looks a little bit different. So uh, what we'll do is we'll first off is go into our base page and we want to get rid of this jumbotron. We don't want this in here anymore, right? So let's just get, get rid of that and we can cut out the entire thing. Okay, so then in our home page, let's actually put it inside of the block content there. And now if we refresh um, on our share page, this is our share page because we had that link, the Jumbotron goes away. On our home page, uh, we have a invalid block tag of static. Well, if you remember when we loaded static in the last one, we had to actually load it in. So if we scroll up, we see that this. So this is technically a template tag. So we have to load the template tag in order for this to work. Otherwise, we'll see that error. So if I refresh, now we see something like this. Okay, so it's starting to look right, but if we look at our page here, it's not indented right here, right? And that's how the styling currently is. And if we go into our base, what we'll see is this container, what this container is doing is bringing everything in. So if I remove that container from the content and I'll just put it with the footer down here to make sure that the footer's still in the container or in a container and I'll actually put the HR line, do a refresh. Now everything's out really far, at least down here, but the Jumbotron now looks good. It's back to how it was. So all we have to do is in our home page underneath Jumbotron is add div class of container. Close off that div. Now it is looking a lot better. Definitely a lot closer to that. It's not quite there, but it's, it's getting there, right? So um, one thing that we could do right off the bat is we can actually align all of this stuff. So let's go ahead and do style text align center to refresh and now there we go so it's actually starting to look a little bit more like this one it's not perfect but it's getting there um, and then this stuff we'll worry about later so now when i go into my share well i don't actually have to enter it in i can see it here this is what we want it to look like at least on that one so the background of that one actually looks like the right color, right? So it's gray, where this one's gray here, and it's not gray on our share page, right? We don't have anything on our share page, actually. So if I refresh in here, I see nothing. So let's actually make it so the Jumbotron here is has a background color of white. So what I'll do is I'll just add style equals to background color white, okay? Refresh, goes away. Now that border is gone, looks nice and clean. It's back to being a little bit cleaner looking. All right, so that's cool. Okay, so we might wanna have a line somewhere. So let's underneath it, right? So like how we see, well, there's not a line here actually, but uh, we could add one if we wanted just for now. So we can see that the um, page is actually showing us a separation. So there, I added that line. 
and I added it outside the container so it would go all the way across. If I add it inside the container, it will just be contained within the container, uh, which that actually fits a little bit better because of the bottom line as well. Okay, cool. So it's getting closer. It's definitely getting there. Um, so now let's actually get to the share page. All right, so let's open up share.html. And just like what we did with the home page is we have the Jumbotron. So let's go ahead and copy this main Jumbotron and put it with inside of this block content. I'm gonna get rid of this background color of white. Okay. And then below that, we wanna do a div class of container. So we want it to be inside of a container. So um, that's class. It's all coming from Bootstrap. So all of these classes and BTN class, BTN success, all that stuff's coming from Bootstrap. If I refresh in here, I got a pay. I got a four. I got a four hundred four error. Now, why would you think that I have a four hundred four error? Well, in our view, if there's any type of exception, anything wrong whatsoever, it raises four hundred four. If we look at our share, what could be wrong? I already know what it is, and hopefully you do too. It's static. We did not load in that template tag. So load static files. You have to load it in each time you want to use it. So now that we have that, the home page and the share page look very similar still, but still very different, right? So it's actually starting to look different, which is good. I do want to have a different image though. I don't want the iPhone image anymore. I want the launch image now. If I do a refresh, it's not launch.png, it's launch.jpg. Do a refresh now. Ah, it loads. Well, I don't want it on the right hand side, I want it on the left, right? I just want it to be on the other side. So that's a simple fix. We just add a class of poll left or poll right. I add poll left, save it, do a refresh, and then poll right to the other one switches those around. But when we change the size of it, eventually the top part will go back as the top. Um, so this is about medium. I don't like how this looks. So what I'm gonna do is instead of column small, I'm gonna change it to column medium. So then below medium, it's gonna take up the entire row. So if I refresh, you see that it takes up the entire row. That's perfect, That's that's what I wanna see more of, right? Something more like that. Yeah, that looks better, I think. Uh, it's gonna be up to you on how you end up using that. All right, so now we've got our home page looking more like our home page, and then our share page looking a lot more like our share page. Share page is really close. What I like is this rounded little corners. So you can go into getbootstrap.com, and we can look at stuff like this. So in CSS, we scroll down and go to images, Scroll down a little bit. So I already added this image responsive class and that's allowing it to change the size, right? Uh, and then what we also see is down here is different stylings that we can add to it. So image rounded is this first one, circle is the second, thumbnail is the third. If I add image rounded to this class, I go into my share page and do a refresh. It rounds it off a little bit, right? So now it really looks like that one. Okay, so I just rounded it off just a little bit, just slightly, enough to make it give a little bit more of a style. Um, if you wanted circle, which you might, you could use circle, and that will turn it into a circle. So maybe you want that. Uh, this might actually look be a little bit better for your homepage. If you have a bunch of different images, you might wanna put circles here versus a big image, because that kind of just like, whoa, too circular. So let's just do a little rounded. Cool, so now we've got that. Um, we have, we're getting definitely a lot closer. There's one more thing here, and this is the top bar here, and then there's a top bar here. So this top bar is actually gonna be the navigation bar. Uh, hopefully it looks familiar to you. So like if we go to codingforentrepreneurs.com, um, we see that there is a top bar there as well. And yes, it is almost identical, just a little bit different of a color. So eventually we want this to be the navigation bar, but I don't want any navigation on it yet because all I really want them to do is share stuff. 
So let's go into CS into our into uh, Bootstrap, and I'm actually just going to go into Get Started, and then go into Examples, and I'm going to grab the starter template, and I want to inspect element. I'm just going to copy the navigate the nav bar here. So I see the top one, the very top is this nav bar. So if I click Edit as HTML, I can just copy this whole thing here. Copy that and then go into my content and I'm just gonna add it right above that Jumbotron there. Save it, go into a refresh. And now we see that, hey, check it out. Our content is actually there, our navigation bar is there. So I can get rid of the links themselves, right? So if I get rid of the link, it now it has a hover state, but it, it does not have a link there. Can, if you get rid of the class, it, it will change it to, to, to a way we don't want it to look. So let's just keep it like that. And then I'm going to get rid of the nav bar collapse because we don't want it to collapse. And then if I collapse it, I don't want this button to show up either. Right? I just want the nav bar to be all by itself. I can get rid of this button right here. And there we go. So what we see here is a subtle mistake, right? So it's it's just this little gap right here that's that's causing this to just not flow or look that great. Um, so if we looked at Swift for Entrepreneurs, we see that that gap is not there. Now this has to do with how our columns are set up, right? So this columns, they should actually exist inside of a row um, every single time. So if we're gonna put columns at all, it shouldn't be container and then columns, it should be container and then row, so class of row. And then if we refresh, that that just subtly, that just made a slight little change to it and allowed it to actually show um, the row correctly. But what we still see is that navigation bar is staying with us. We don't want that. We want the navigation bar to stay at the top. So let's go into our nav bar here. And all we need to do is delete this here. And we come back and we refresh. Ah, so now we have this spacing here. So if I inspect the element on the nav bar, I can see that there's probably a border or a margin below it. And that orange line that pops up, the thick orange line is actually that margin. So clicking on this, I can scroll down and see that there's this bootstrap stuff and there's a bottom margin of 20. So if I unselect it, it goes away and it fits it a little bit better. And then I also notice this border radius. See how it's kind of curved a little bit? Maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want it just flat, you know, just like that. That's actually what I do want. So I want to have some custom styles here that will have a border race radius for the nav bar of zero pixels and then a margin bottom of zero pixels for the nav bar as well. So let's just grab the class of nav bar. And then in our base, where we have these other styles like we've done, like we saw before. We can add the nav bar and I'll just say margin bottom equals zero picks. And I'm just going to say important because that's exactly what I want. Uh, important means that it's, it's going to be overriding any other rules. And then I want border radius to be zero pixels. Also important. Do a refresh in here. And now we have our navigation bar there and it's working. It's also only going to be on the share page. It's not going to be on that other page. Um, so it's only on the share page. We will probably want to change to where when this is hovered, it's not actually changing colors, um, which we'll work on. Or Well, we could do that right now. So if we go into inspect element to see what the element's name is, and that's navbar dash brand. Um, so when it's hovered, it's likely changing this color right here to something different. So what I'll do is I'm going to copy this right here, that whole class back into the base file. And I'm going to change the color to white. And then I'm also going to, I'm going to put a comma so it, we can add another element and then just a colon and then hover. So this is grabbing that element at its hover state, and I'm gonna change that to white as well. Do a refresh, and now when I go over it, it just shows the text line 
and we have our project name there, which is great. That's what we want to see. Um, cool. So that kind of link look is gone. Although if we look at the link itself, so on our nav bar on share, it's still a link, right? So it's still an anchor tag. So even if it was href that, it would show the click, but it doesn't actually change the ho hover state. So I'm just gonna keep the href off. And now that that's gone, that's perfect. So one more thing that I actually do wanna do is I wanna cut this out here and go include navbar.html. So this include tag will bring in an external page, which in this case it's navbar. And I have something called navbar.html. We no longer wanna use this one at all. I'm just gonna paste in the one that I have, or actually I'll comment out all of this one, because maybe we wanna go back to that at some point. And then I'll paste this in. So I wouldn't recommend that you guys do this. I'm only doing it for our own reference later. All right, so if I refresh again, navbar is still the same, and it's really starting to come together. All right, so um, we now are getting really close to the style and look of Swift for Entrepreneurs. Of course, there's still a few things that we need to fix, but we are definitely getting there. All right, we will see you in the next one.